Once upon a time, sports writers looked a little like this. They wore a hat, they had a notepad, pen, somebody talked, they took notes, and that's it. Then, actually now, sort of the hat is long gone. If they don't have a cell phone, they're taping with something else. And I've even discovered myself over the years, my note taking has gone way down. But why am I talking about this? I'm thinking about two things. Number one is Sheldon Oker from the Akron Beacon Journal, a good friend of mine, recently went into the uh, Spink part of the Baseball Hall of Fame. It's the writer's wing. And Sheldon, um, 33 years on the beat in Akron covering the Indians. Uh, I remember he came on during the 1981 season. He came fresh off covering the Cavaliers and Ted Stepien. And it was almost like a guy had the, the equivalent of journalistic uh, post-stress syndrome. I mean, he just kept talking about Ted Stepien and Bill Musselman ad nauseum. And it's like he was just kind of venting all that and to him, which shows you how bad it was on the, the Cavs beat back then. The Indians of the early 80s was tranquil. And by the way, there's nothing real tranquil about that time, too. The team was bad like normal. Uh, anyway, 33 years later, Sheldon's a Hall of Famer. Congratulations, he belongs there. He joins in the writer's wing of the Hall of Fame. Two other Cleveland writers, both from the Pine Dealer, Hal Levowitz, uh, one of my idols growing up, and then a man I got to know later on, and a guy before that, Gordon Cobbledick. Gordon Cobbledick was my father's favorite writer. Gordon Cobbledick wrote the book, Don't Knock the Rock, about Rocky Calavito. I recently met several of Gordon's relatives when I spoke at the uh, Burton Library. So we have three area writers, and I'm going to throw another guy in there just because he's from Akron, although he, his career was spent primarily with the Dayton Daily News. That is Hal McCoy. Hal McCoy from Akron, Dayton Daily News. He's also in there. So part of the thing I like about the Baseball Hall of Fame in terms of the writer's wing is they're not all New York, Chicago-centered. You know, writers, they brought in, look, we just mentioned three guys from, uh, from the Cleveland area, Cleveland Akron area, and another one, you know, from Dayton. Who would be next? I got a name. Paul Hines. Our Paul Hines from the Point Dealers. I think he is on, he, I think he came on in 1982. So he is on year 3,721 covering the Indians. And he still goes strong. Paul, uh, I think, would be very deserving and really does belong, you know, along with Sheldon and Hal Levowitz and Gordon Cobbledick. And I think that also shows one of the things, too, that we have had in this area uh, some very strong sports writers, especially when it came to baseball. This is a surprise to me. Now there is the Ford Frick wing of the Hall of Fame, which is for broadcasters. So I was trying to say, is anybody from Cleveland in there? One, and it goes back to the days of hats. In fact, I remember seeing him wear it. Jimmy Dudley, Jimmy Dudley from the 1960s. You know, he says, used to say, you know, the string is out. And he also was famous for doing, you know, Garfield 1, 2, 3, 2, 3 commercials, or cons, the wiener the world awaited. Well, anyway, he is the only Cleveland area broadcaster in the Baseball Hall of Fame. I'm going to take my hat off now. We're going to go modern. The next one should be, and this should be a lock, a no doubter, Tom Hamilton. I don't know if he has to retire first or whatever. Tom came on in 1990 with the Indians, and he really was the soundtrack of so many great Indians teams and so many bad Indians teams. Uh, so Tom Hamilton. Paul Hoyne should be our next Hall of Famers coming up in the next number of years. And by the way, once again, congratulations, Sheldon Oker, after 33 years, either a Purple Heart or the Hall of Fame. Not sure which, but you should get both.